I'm going to talk about tools on boats now. That's a subject close to my heart because um, oh, a couple of years ago I was involved with a charter. I chartered a boat, an ordinary bare boat charter. And there was really no toolkit of any significance on the boat at all. And I said to the guy, well, what's going to happen if something falls off or something goes wrong? He said, oh, you get on the radio and call us up and we'll come and sort you out. So I don't want to be doing that. I said I might just be, just want to sort it out myself and get on with my life. I can't be waiting half a day while your bloke comes around. He says, well, we can't trust people to use tools. He said, we've tried it and we get into all sorts of trouble. So we've decided we're not going to give them any tools at all. Well, that is one point of view, isn't it? But I must say that speaking as a sailor, and I'm sure everybody watching this, if you're all sailors, you've got to You've got a self-help philosophy, haven't you? You want to be able to sort things out. There's nothing worse than being on a boat, something goes wrong, and you haven't got a tool that'll fix it. So I'm just going to talk you through what I carry on my boat, just for interest, for, for normal sailing on a decent cruising boat. Um, these tools are not new. Some of them have been around with me for years and years, decades. Some of them actually for 50 years. Uh, and some of them are old friends. Others are relatively new. So they don't all look pristine new like they do in the movies, you know. This is, this is real life. So let's see what we've got. Start with this little collection here. This is my ready-use toolkit. This lives in a nice little locker in the companionway on the boat so that it's ready for whatever I need very, very quickly. What is in it? Well, we've got two screwdrivers here. We've got a Phillips-headed, cross-headed screwdriver, and we've got a flat-headed screwdriver. They will deal with most of the jobs you want a screwdriver for. If anything serious happens, and you want a bigger screwdriver, I've got this chap as well. He's a pretty useful fella. He's got, a, he's got a, an angled shaft look that I can put a spanner on to help it along a bit if I want, and a nice big, big blade. So that's the ready-use screwdrivers. Um, also, in my little pack here, I've got a selection of adjustable spanners. This little chap is great for rigging because if you want to undo a stainless steel shackle, this is the very thing. You must never use a spike on a shackle. It's a horrible thing to do. Always get a, one of these across the, across the head and just wind it round like that. And this one's a perfect size for that. It doesn't have much other use actually, but I use it for that. This middle-sized fella here is, um, this is a beauty. I bought this in 1972 in Berseldam when I was kitting myself out with a toolkit to go world cruising. And uh, it's one of the tools that survived. It looks a bit ratty, it looks as if it's gone all rusty and horrible, but it is not. Look at this, look how sweetly, how sweetly it moves. Absolutely lovely. And there's not much play in it either. It's a very useful little spanner, that. And if there's a big job that comes up that I haven't got time to get my real spanners out, I've got this fella. This is big enough to do the nut on a propane bottle. So, um, very handy thing to have. What am I doing with an old box spanner in my ready-use toolkit? Well, this is just great if you've got a stuck seacock. You know, and you're just, you're just, it's in an awkward place and you just can't get enough grip on it and it's gone a bit tight. Stick that on the handle and give it a pull. It'll work every time. There's nothing like an old box spanner. So find yourself one of them if you haven't got one. A couple of pairs of pliers. I don't have to explain what those are for, we all know. And a hammer. A serious hammer. You never know, do you? You never know what you're going to want to just help along a bit. And if you've got a hammer handy, well, you can always clobber the mate with it, can't you, if it gets a little bit out of order. And of course, the multi-tool that every sailor should carry. Some people carry this on the belt, and I think that's quite a good idea, but uh, I have it uh, tucked away just in my ready-use locker there, so it's ready for anything. There's all sorts on here, all sorts of tools, and one way or another, this little lock will cover most of the eventualities that I come across in the day-to-day -day running of the boat. I've got an excess pile of screwdrivers here, which will fit almost any known eventuality, including if I can find it, here it is, including a set of jeweller's screwdrivers, which we all need now, because all this tiny little stuff we've got with our electronics, weeny little screw heads and goodness knows what, you can hardly see the thing. You've got to have a set of these, they're cheap as chips, so kit yourself up, get one of them too. 
And that's really it. Um, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty now and look at some serious tools. But that's what I use day to day, always ready. Right, after the ready use tools, the next lot we're going to have a look at are um, ha, the good old drill. You know, hasn't this changed our lives? Those of us who are old enough to remember hand drills will remember what a complete pain they were. And the modern, simple, small electric drill is an absolute masterpiece, and it, it, everybody should have one of these. You can use it as a screwdriver. I've got all the drills I want here and no doubt there's lots of other things it can do as well but the main thing is I can charge this up readily on board no problem and and the battery seems to last forever and it's just it's just great I wouldn't want to be without that and then there's all the stuff in the toolbox now this toolbox has been with me for a while um, 12 years to my certain knowledge of course it's been on board the boat all that time the old catches are looking a bit rusty but don't despair because they work perfectly so I'm not over worried about what they look like because nobody sees it except me and, and you now as well Let's see what's in here okay top shelf a good set of spanners or wrenches if you're an American and these guys are good quality and I've got metric ones and I've got uh, imperial measurements as well so I'm ready for whatever comes I've just shown you three adjustable spanners and I bet a lot of you are absolutely cringing to see them because we all know they're not nice things to use but just for knocking around on deck when you want a quick wrench they're really useful but for serious engineering work you've got to have the right thing so we've got a set of spanners we've got a halfway decent file circlip pliers really useful try living without them ah, another multi-tool here this one uh, used to take this on my motorbike on motorbike trips and there's a dreadful old round rusty file there as I say this is reality this is not fantasy this is what really exists on a real boat that's going to see what's in the box look at that a strap spanner with that, you can remove the most difficult oil or fuel filter that ever was. It'll always get a grip on it and pull it off. It do other things as well if you need them. I've even used it to open, uh, open bottles of things that uh, have got stuck up in the galley. It's a great thing. WD-40. Junior hacksaw. Just critical on all boats. Everybody's got to have one of those. A small hammer, rather more modest than the one I keep in my ready-use toolkit, but it's got a nice hand, it's a nicely balanced tool, that. I like that, I've had it for a long time. Carburetor and brake cleaner. There is nothing like this for shifting grease. It might be uh, not the most green thing you can get, but it's absolutely wonderful if you've got a nasty greasy thing and you want to clean it up, give it a good spray with that and the stuff falls off. We've got uh, Oh, we've got Allen keys in here, look. Metric and Imperial. So nothing's going to catch us out there. We've got the bigger solid spanners and we've got a very useful little set of drills as an extra set so they don't get caught out. and a fairly big adjustable. They keep getting bigger, the adjustables. <laughs> you never know, do you? They might be sacrilege, but you never know. And I particularly like this little box of stuff here, this little box of tricks. These guys, look at that. Look at those heads. There's something that will get in any screw on the planet practically in there, and something to hold it with, and there's a handle there that takes them all. A really nice little piece of kit sort of thing you might see in a car boot sale and you're just wondering well it's only costs a couple of quid pick it up it might save your ship one day and a serious drift for banging things with that you can't get out with a hammer there you go that's the toolbox the core of everything for engineering work really work on your engine or certain facets of your rig maybe a winch or something is a decent socket set we've all messed around with cheap ones that we've bought think that'll be all right for the boat but it's not you've got to buy something good and 
Depending on what sort of boat you've got, I suppose if you've bought a European built boat and everything on it's European, you're probably safe enough with just a metric socket set. But um, for me, with the sort of boats I'm sailing and the sort of life I lead, I want to have everything covered. So this has got imperial and metric. I bought this in Canada and it's a while back now. I bought it in 1996. I remember it well because I was just commissioning Western Man, the boat I'd had built there. I went out there and had very few tools. So. Um, this is the one I bought and I've had it ever since. It's done well. It's showing signs of age as a few of the sockets have got knocked a bit, but uh, it's pretty good. There was very little shortfall in this when I bought it. It didn't have a, it didn't have a long extension. So I bought it a long extension and um, I just keep it tucked in there behind there. It's fine. It lives in there happily. Everything else is there. I lost the small ratchet drive um, a while ago. It went over the side, so I had to buy another and it lives in there and it doesn't really fit very well but it's okay it manages we've got a little screwdriver head there which is so useful particularly for the really small sockets like these little guys here you know these are absolutely brilliant for doing up uh, hose clips uh, they're absolutely magnificent very often you'll find you think well, I've got to put a screwdriver on that hose clip but if you look at it carefully you'll see it's got a hexagon head you put one of them on it and whack it up and you can get it as tight as you want so um, make sure your socket set's got some small ones in it as well and make it your friend buy a decent one that you can live with for the rest of your life and get another one for home as well because you're going to need one there and you're going to get sick of carrying it from home to the boat. So there you go. There's the socket set. Speak to most sailors and you'll find that we're happy enough with big nuts and bolts. Big wrenches, whack it on, tighten it up. We're alright with all that stuff. We quite enjoy it really. But the tiny little intricate stuff, the electrical stuff, tends to psych us out. So next up, here's my electric box. I've got Basically, most of what I need in here, a pair of decent wire cutters, wire stripper. This is a magnificent tool, didn't cost much money and you shove the wire in there, go like that and when it comes open again the wire coating of the wire shoots off the end, you've got a lovely clean, clean core ready to work with, beautiful tool. I've got a real El Cheapo crimper here. I don't think much of this. This is a piece of junk, really. I should buy myself a better one. Um, very often I'm guilty and I crimp with a small mole grip. I should get a good crimper. Lots of light bulbs. Chocolate blocks. Absolutely essential. When anything breaks in the way of a wire or you're not sure about something and you need to splice a couple of wires together, the easy way for the average man is to poke one end in one of these and poke the other end in and uh, tighten up the screws and that's you. It'll hold. Um, it might not be tidy but it'll get you home. More bulbs and boxes and boxes full of useful little fittings. Here they are. Load up on them. You never know what you're going to need and you never know what you're going to need it. So that is what you've got to have. And a basic soldering kit. If you've never done any soldering, go on YouTube. The boys there will show you how to do it far better than I can. And you just need a basic kit like this. This is all it is. It doesn't cost much money and you'll be surprised how effective it can be. So what about rigging? Well that's something else you need tools for isn't it? But um, I love rigging. I used to really enjoy it when we had traditional boats and galvanised wire and three strand ropes that you could splice easily and make magical things with. Uh, it's a bit different these days but I've got to show you this. Um, this, this mat I made for the boat um, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago I suppose, and it's, it, it's sitting pretty at the bottom of the companionway. Um, I learned how to do that years ago in Barbados when I was down on my luck. We'd arrived from South America and we had no money. Um, but what I had in the forecastle was a really big coil of rope about that sort of gauge. Um, it was traditional rope and manila and I'd won it in an old gaffer's, <laughs> old gaffer's rally on the Solna about three years before and I thought to myself what am I going to do? I've got to make some money. I know, I'll make some rope mats and see if I can sell them on the beach to the tourists. So I did and um, I made mats like this one. 
and uh, I flogged them, made some money. I made hats as well with some old canvas that I'd got, but uh, it seems a long time ago now. It's another life, isn't it? Still, things go on. Now look, this is the rigging bag with my stuff in. What's in here? All sorts of wonders. The little blue bag, which lives in top, has got my sailmaker's palm in it. It's got all sorts of little handy reels of small stuff for stitching things. It's got my old palm there, I've got a new one, look. It's got some beeswax for stripping the line through if it's not already waxed. You've got to have a bit of beeswax, you know, it's such fun. Just stripping the line through it, it comes out all lovely and sort of, it just threads so beautifully through a needle after that. And here's my, my little cache of needles. And um, that's very important because uh, all my ropes, or well, nearly all of them, are quite nicely whipped. Now I like to do a palm and needle whipping, so everything I need is in there. That's that lot. There's all sorts of odd string and things in here. There's a nice little remains of a skein of seizing wire, but there's plenty there. That'll see me through a couple of seasons. There's the magical sail coat, the magical Mac lube. Every boat should have cans of this. There's nothing like it for lubricating things you don't want to get oily, like the luff of your sails that are going up grooves or something like that. Terrific. I've got two Swedish fids, look. A big one and a little one so I can get at anything I need just to poke things through. Very often these are officially for splicing rope, uh, three strand rope, but actually I find all sorts of uses for them. I find this is very useful. For, um, uh, I, I have a little tying mechanism for tying in the, the battens to my fully battened mainsail and this is really useful for just, just passing the little lashings through. A hundred uses. Proper marlin spike for repelling borders and for replacing or getting stuck into a rope that just won't do it. It's really for splicing wire, but that's all in the past. Here's something else that's in the past. Look at that, a heaving mallet. I'm not going to tell you what that's for. If you don't know, it's too late. There we are. Well, that's a useful rigging bag. I tell you, there's something else in here, but I can't find it now. It's disappeared. Um, I've got a complete set of splicing fids for, um, for splicing modern rope, for splicing braid line. And only two days ago I put a Brummel splice into a Dyneema halyard for my new Code Zero. So the old rigging bag's not dead yet. We're still using it. Rigging goes on. And finally, I bet you thought this was never going to end, didn't you? Um, I've got a sort of rogues gallery here of things that don't fit any particular category. What have we got? Well, we've got Iron Bull. This is the final solution. You know, if you've got something that just won't move and it's big, this is going to do it. I've had this for donkey's years. It says Iron Bull on the other side and it's made in China. And it's not the best tool known to man, but it's an absolute unstoppable force when you really need it. I've got a couple of saws here. We've got a good quality hacksaw. Again, vital tool really. And I've got some good blades too, but they're in with a chance of sawing through some, well, not too high quality stainless. A wood saw, you know? You never know what you're going to have to saw. You never know what you're going to need to do. So having a wood saw on board, they, these cost pennies, these throwaway saws, and they're ever so sharp. They do the job. And um, also, a wood chisel. This one looks awful. That's because it's been in, it's in, in a tool bag on a boat, but actually it's sharp as a razor. I could shave with that edge, it's so sharp, and I've just sharpened it to make sure it's still good on my oilstone, which I carry on board, and I've had that all my life. So um, that's handy. I've also got a plane, which is down below, and I forgot to bring it up, so you're not going to see that. But with those tools, I can cut across the grain, I can shave things down along the grain to get something to the sort of size I want, and if I need to do a fairly large alteration, I can do it with the chisel. So I've also got a dirty old wrecking chisel down there that I can bang into things to break it up with. And I've got a wrecking bar. It's not a big one, it's a sweet one, but I like that. Good tool. You never know when you're going to want it. Again, maybe once every five years, but when you do, nothing else will, nothing else will handle it. Bolt croppers. 
We're all told that we should carry those and we all hope we'll never need them. But in the event of a dismasting, they might just prove critically useful. What about this guy? <laughs> Look, he's got little teeth there. He's great because with that, you can reach the bottom of most people's bilges and you can pull out that little bolt or that critical little circlip that you've dropped down there and you thought you were never going to see again. Again, you know, these cost next to nothing, but they're really handy things to have. Don't weigh anything either, so if you're worried about weight, there you are. A mastic gun with some mastic. This is general purpose silicone, which is pretty handy for uh, re-bedding things quickly. I re-bedded my organizer on the deck, my rope organizer, the one that brings the ropes back from the mast to the cockpit with this, um, a month ago. I had a mysterious leak, won't go into the details, but this did the trick. And I had it on board, in stock, all ready to go. I've got two other tubes of mastic, I've got some Seekerflex for serious jobs, and I've got some Arbo mast, which is really, I've found, the best thing in the world for actually bedding things down when you don't want it ever to completely go off. And the last tool in the box, here it is, never go to sea without a bent coat hanger. Now this one is so bent you can't recognise what it was because it's been used for so many things. But look, you can bend it into any shape you like. And that one there was used not so long since for getting down a little drain hole in the cockpit that was supposed to be letting water through out of one of the gutters and it wasn't. And I've got a hook on the other end, look for getting hold of something and just pulling it through. You could, there's an endless usefulness about a bent coat hanger. They don't make them anymore. They're really hard to find now. I think you've probably got to buy them on the internet. You used to get them all the time when you took your clothes to the dry cleaners. They come on with wire coat hangers. But it's another thing that's deteriorated in the state of modern man. But you must have a bent coat hanger. Well, phew, well that's my tools on this particular boat for what I'm doing. I'm very rarely caught dry and, and, and haven't got the tool I want. You'll have tools that you love and that you think, why hasn't he got one of those? I can't believe he hasn't told us about that. Well, put a comment on the, on, on the YouTube channel. Don't be too hard on me. As I say, this is reality. It's what we do in the world. It's not a set piece. So tell us what you've got. Share it. We'll all be the wiser.